Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters for making this video possible, and we would also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well, so please check the link in the description for more details. My name is Safa, and today we are continuing algorithmic trading in Python using technical analysis. And today our topic is to code our own trading bot using the logic of relative strength index, or RSI for short, as our technical trading rule. So first of all, let's discuss the packages that we'll need to implement the code. We obviously need our usual NumPy and Pandas for arrays and data frames, respectively. We need the Yahoo Finance, Y Finance package, importing it as YF, to get API requests and real market data downloaded straight into our code. Y Finance needs to be imported separately using the pip install command in the Anaconda environment, so please make sure you have installed it before. And for visualization, let's import matplotlib pyplot as plt. Having imported all the packages, we can proceed with our trading bot. And uh, first, let's specify which stock are we going to pick to trade based on RSI. So let's just use Coca-Cola, KO as the ticker, and code uh, the stock as a string variable for further reference. Now let's get our data straight from Yahoo Finance, and that would be a data frame imported using the API request. So we use the Yahoo Finance download function, specify the ticker, that's the stock variable we have just implemented, and start an end date as string variables in American format. So let's start 2016-0101 and end today, 2021-0321. So we'll start 1st of January 2016 and end 21st of March 2021. Now we can specify our strategy parameters and uh, to trade based on RSI we first need to know what is the period we'll use to calculate our index and uh, the classical value of this parameter is 14 trading days so let's input 14 over here. Any integer will do and we'll be able to see how the change in RSI period impacts the uh, trading strategy success or failure and we also need to uh, implement the oversold and overbought thresholds. The relative strength index fluctuates between 0 and 100, 0 meaning that it's very much oversold and 100 meaning it's very much overbought. So some value close to 100 and some value close to 0 respectively can be used as our overbought and oversold threshold to trigger selling and buying signals respectively as the RSI relative strength index strategy is very much banking on reversals so that the excessive price movement in one direction will be counterbalanced in the future and trigger a rebound, either bullish or bearish, depending on whether the stock is currently oversold or overbought respectively. So first, for the oversold threshold, let's assume it to be 30. That's the most uh, commonly used value for this threshold. It means that when the strength index goes below 30, we assume that the bearish movement in the stock price will revert soon, triggering a bullish reversal and we can gain on it by longing the stock, by opening a long position on the stock. And the overbought threshold is most commonly assumed to be equal to 70, meaning that as uh, the index goes above 70, the market is excessively optimistic about the stock and most likely the share price is going to revert and trigger a bearish correction and we'll be able to profit from it by opening a short position on the stock by selling it. And then to make our strategy more robust and see how it performs subject to some level of trading fees, let's code our fee level at 5 basis points. So fifth of a percent, 0 0.0005. Now we can start coding our technical analysis signal and here our uh, pandas uh, built-in functions are very helpful. First of all, we can code as new columns, as new series in our data frame data imported before from Yahoo Finance, the returns of the stock that we will use to justify how well our strategy performs compared to the buy and hold strategy, where you buy Coca-Cola at the start of 2016 and, and sell it at the current day. So basically we can apply to the data close column, which is closing prices of Coca-Cola, the built-in pandas function called PCT 
underscore change, percentage change, that will calculate day-to-day -day return from the second day until the very end. Then we can start coding our relative strength index, and to code it, we need to know the upward and downward movements of the stock price across the RSI period. So to get the upward movements of the stock price, we can just implement the diff function in Pandas that will calculate differences in stock prices day to day. However, here we need to only take the positive price movements and not the negative price movements, substituting them with zeros. And here the numpy maximum function will help that calculates element-wise maxima of two arrays. So we can say numpy maximum of this differences and zeros, and it will return a series of upward price changes and zeros when the price changes are negative. In a similar fashion, we can also calculate the downward movements of the price by applying the same numpy maximum functions to the negative differences of the close, returning absolute values of downward movements of the stock price and zeros when the movements of the price are positive. Now we can cal calculate our relative strength, uh, which is just a ratio between our average up and average down over the course of our specified RSI period. So here the built-in rolling mean function in Pandas is extremely helpful. So we go data up rolling, specifying the period as RSI period. This is our integer variable we have just coded. And specify the function, mean. And then we divide it by the same function applied to the data down series. It means that if the share price movements have been excessively negative, these uh, the numerator would be close to zero and the denominator would be large, meaning that relative strength would be close to zero. And if the reverse is true, if downward movements are very limited and the upward movements prevail, then this value will tend to infinity. And using this simple logic, we can convert our relative strength to the relative strength index, RSI itself, by using the simple formula, 100 minus 100 divided by 1 plus data RS. And here it means that if the relative strength is very low, close to zero, this denominator would be close to 1, this would be close to 100, and the index would be close to zero. That's exactly what we need. And if the relative strength uh, is close to infinity, data up being much, much higher than data down, then this denominator would be close to infinity, this ratio would be close to zero, and the index would be close to 100, meaning that will certainly trigger an overbought signal and a bearish trading move for our strategy. And now we can finally start trading based on the signals we would have obtained from the relative strength index. So first we need to specify that we can start trading only when we can calculate our index with enough data in our hands. So basically we can only start trading on the 14th day when we have got enough data to uh, inform our decisions. And now we can start converting our relative strength index that we calculate day by day starting from this particular start date into uh, buy and sell signals. And we'll code buy signals as one and bearish signals, sell signals as negative one. Zero being a neutral signal, meaning that we'll stay in cash and we won't trade Coca-Cola stock at all. So here we can say that our data signal would be equal to a combination of Boolean functions. Basically we'll code a bunch of uh, logical conditions that would uh, compare our RSI to the thresholds that we want and generate uh, some guidance towards how to trade in Coca-Cola. So one times data RSI less than RSI oversold, meaning that if our relative strength index goes below 30, as we have specified before, it will trigger a bullish signal and we will buy Coca-Cola banking on the bearish movement to reverse. As I already mentioned, RSI heavily trades on reversals, unlike moving average convention divergence, for example, that heavily implies that trends do persist. So these two strategies are kind of the opposite of each other in terms of the logic and in terms of what they assume the market inefficiencies are. Minus one times the 
condition that data RSI is greater than the RSI over bot threshold. So if RSI goes above 70, then we can safely assume that the uh, bullish movement historically has been excessive or overly optimistic and it will revert back. So there would be a correction and we'll be able to capitalize on that by shorting Coca-Cola. And now we can start simulating our strategy by comparing it to the buy and hold strategy. And the buy and hold returns are just equal to the NumPy array of the return uh, of our stock, so data returns, and we need to input it from the day start plus one until the very end, simply because the first day we can obtain our return is start plus one. We invest on day start and we obtain our first return at the next close. So that's quite intuitive. Then we can also calculate our RSI return that will compare to the buy and hold return, and that would be the area of returns times the NumPy array of the respective signals. And we need here to implement the logic of lagged signals because we uh, get the return tomorrow based on the signals we have obtained today. So we need to get it from the start day until the penultimate day, day minus one. And here we can also implement the trading fees we would have paid based on the changes in positions we incurred across the trading period. However, let's simulate it with, without fees first and then proceed to coding the fees uh, in the next iteration of the code. So here we can already calculate the annualized return of both strategies, both the buy and hold and technical analysis strategy, and the annualized risk, the annualized standard deviation of those. So first of all, our buy and hold return, let's just call it B and H, would be equal to the product, so NumPy product of one plus B and H return to the power of 252, as there are 252 trading days in a year, over the length of the array of buy and hold returns, minus one, as we want the annualized return and not the annualized rate of capital appreciation. And now we can copy this and change the relevant variable names to get the annualized return of the RSI strategy. So RSI return over here and the length of RSI return array over here. And then to calculate the risk, we can use the NumPy standard deviation function applied to the buy and hold return array, and we'll need to annualize that, multiplying it by the square root of 252. So 252 to the power of a half. Then we can also calculate the risk of our RSI strategy. And here we just substitute the buy and hold return array with the RSI array. And having calculated all that, we can start building up some simple interface, visualizing our results using both textual interface and graphs that we'll build using the Matplotlib PyPlot package. So first, we'll need to print that the buy and hold strategy return and risk would be equal to, and here to avoid uh, reporting too many excessive decimal places and report the return in percentages to make it more intuitive and understandable, let's add the string variable of the rounded buy and hold return times 100 and round it to the two nearest decimal places and add a percentage sign and the risk would be again string variable of a rounded buy and hold risk times 100 rounded to the two nearest decimal places. Then we add another percentage sign and close the parentheses. The same interface can be replicated for our RSI strategy. So here we just say that our RSI strategy return and risk is equal to rounded RSI return and rounded RSI risk. And finally, we can use the PLT plot functions to plot the equity curves, the cumulative total return curves of both strategies. So we can use NumPy comprod function, calculating the cumulative product of one plus buy and hold return and appending one at the start, so that we started one and then we start accumulating our returns and plotting the RSI return as well. And we can finally enforce our code and we see how well our strategy performs. We see that across the whole time period, our relative strength index strategy performance in orange is in excess of the market performance, pretty much, with some uh, drawdowns um, in the process. However, it massively outperforms the market in the uh, year 2020, meaning that, as we've seen with uh, 
the moving average convergent diversion strategy. Technical analysis can be more profitable when the market is very volatile and very predictable, very inefficient. And that was notably the case during the early stages of the current pandemic and the respective financial crisis involved with that. But will this strategy hold up if we introduce trading fees to the picture? Let's check this out. Here we have got our fee in basis points coded already, and to implement that and to get net returns, we'll just need to subtract fee times the uh, variable that would represent whether we trade in that day or not. And that would just be the absolute value of the change in signal day to day. Because if we stay in the same trade, if we do not change our positions, we would not need to pay any fees to our broker. And if we change our signal, so if, for example, we change our signal from 1 to 0, it means that we have to sell Coca-Cola, meaning that we incur the fees once. And if we change our signal from minus 1 to 1, for example, then we would have to close our short trade and open a long position, meaning that we'll pay the fees twice. So the absolute differences of signal and lagged signal would implement this logic quite nicely. So we get the absolute value of the differences between two NumPy arrays. So here we get lagged signal and we'll subtract it from the signal from the day start plus one until the very end. So the uh, absolute difference of signal and lagged signal representing whether we trade in that day or not, and if we trade, whether we trade twice or we trade once. And that would expose us to the level of fees we have specified over here as our separate variable. So let's run the code again and see that when we are subject to five basis points of fees, our uh, return is uh, significantly lower than it was before. However, we still manage to outperform the market. However, there exists a high level of fees and most retail traders like you and me are exposed to quite high fee levels, unfortunately. Uh, and under such high fees, it is uh, easy to see that such a strategy would quickly become unprofitable. Another uh, nice feature of such a code is that you could change the thresholds of your RSI for your simulation to see which strategy, which specification of the strategy uh, was performing better historically and which uh, specification or configuration you should choose for future trading perhaps. So we could, for example, make your RSI calculations take a longer time period, for example 21 days, and see that in under these circumstances the RSI strategy performs actually quite a bit uh, worse than the 14-day classical strategy. Or if we reduce the number of uh, trading days that we use to calculate our RSI, we'll see that it makes the result even worse, meaning that the 14-day period is quite optimal and the convention does hold true, at least in this case. However, if we return to 14 uh, trading day period and try and change the thresholds, maybe the thresholds can be optimized further on. Let's make our strategy and the definition of signals less strict, meaning that we'll sell at 35 and buy at 65, We'll do more trades, so we'll pay more fees, but maybe it will be more beneficial overall. And we can see that it is not the case. 30 and 70 did a much better job. And if we make our strategy more restrictive, only buying at 25 and selling at 75, we can see that it still does perform worse than the default configuration of the strategy. Meaning that the 14-day RSI and 30-70 uh, uh, oversold and overbought thresholds do perform the best uh, potentially for this particular stock uh, in this particular time frame, meaning that the convention does uh, ultimately work quite well for the application of the RSI strategy. And that's all there is for your own trading bot coded in Python using the logic of relative strength index and technical trading rules. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions for videos in business, economics, or finance you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.